Hello, this is David Hutton of Ophthalmology Times. We're joined today by Dr. Osama Saidi, who gave a presentation virtually at Arvo. Tell us about your presentation. Well, thank you for the opportunity. So our presentation at Arvo looked at two ways of looking at ocular blood flow. So as we know, ocular blood flow is important for major causes of blindness, including glaucoma, macular degeneration, and diabetic retinopathy. And there's been a real interest in measuring ocular blood flow in different ways. Most notably, people have uh, been looking at OCT angiography. Certainly in the last five or 10 years, you've seen a renaissance in um, ocular blood flow measurement with OCTA, um, but also laser speckle flow has also been a, a way that we can look at ocular blood flow. And so we um, actually looked at it in glaucoma. Um, and so uh, while we typically think of glaucoma as a disease of eye pressure, it is also uh, a disease where people with very low blood pressure and low optic nerve head perfusion or even ocular perfusion uh, have a much higher rate of glaucoma. So there's been a great deal of interest in measuring blood flow in these patients. What our study did was we looked and compared at two ways of looking at ocular blood flow in glaucoma. So we used laser, we used a new, um, just recently FDA approved device called the uh, Zycam retinal imager. Um, and that actually was just FDA approved about a week ago um, to uh, measure optic nerve head blood flow in a small sample of glaucomas, glaucoma suspects and controls. And then we looked at the uh, OCT angiography as measured with the Heidelberg spectralis using their new um, OCTA metrics, um, which is an investigational at this time. Um, so, uh, you know, it's interesting, it's important because when we look at OCT angiography, we're mapping out the vessels. So we looked at peripapillary um, uh, vessel density and vessel perfusion, uh, and we were mapping out the vessel density all the way around the optic disc, um, which is uh, typical metric that we look at for OCTA and glaucoma. Whereas with the laser speckle photography, uh, or I should say uh, laser speckle contrast imaging, we were looking at um, the actual perfusion of the optic nerve head itself. And we're comparing those two measures. My work focuses on ocular blood flow. And, um, you know, there are different ways of approaching this. So we, there's not a lot of literature out there to actually compare different modalities. So ocular blood flow, we've been trying to measure it for 40 years. There's been a lot of different ways of doing it. Doppler, laser Doppler, laser speckle is one of the modalities we use OCT angiography. Um, there's now adaptive optics methods. So there's a lot of different ways to do it, but really measuring if they agree, particularly if they agree in disease state, that's not something that's been done a lot of. Um, you know, it's very, very uh, little literature out there. So uh, we looked at a small sample of um, controls, glaucoma suspects, and glaucoma patients. And we found actually the biggest difference in our glaucoma patients versus controls was as we expected in uh, perfusion density uh, using OCT angiography, as well as um, using the laser speckle contrast imager, uh, looking at the perfusion of the optic nerve head when you mask the vessels. Obviously, we don't want to look at the flow of the retinal circulation, we, which would be, which you would look at with the major vessels. We want to look at just the substance of the optic nerve head itself. And then we further went ahead and looked at where the correlation was between the two. And we found the greatest correlation between the two uh, was both at mean blood flow of the optic nerve head with perfusion density, as well as systolic blood flow at the optic, or I should say peak blood flow with the perfusion density as well, peripapillary perfusion density. So this is also really important in the sense that when we look at OCT angiography, you're looking at sort of the aggregate of your systole and diastole. If we really want to um, maybe get other metrics, complementary metrics, potentially more sensitive metrics of looking at blood flow, the actual flow parameters, how much flow is in, in, at the peak, at the, at the trough, so your systolic and diastolic flow, you know, those may actually be important variables that could tell us more about the disease. Certainly we know in glaucoma, there's not just decreased blood flow, but there's more variability in blood flow. So looking at that variability, looking at the peaks, looking at the, trough, at the troughs, um, you know, is something that we think would be important in that our, you know, our small initial study, I think, has borne out. So that's, you know, that's our work. We're certainly, we're moving forward with this. We are now looking at um, longitudinal studies of uh, both OCT and geography as well as uh, laser speckle contrast imaging. And, you know, we have so many great tools to our, uh, at our disposal now. Um, you know, we've been using, as I said, the, uh, the Heidelberg OCT, OCT and geography platform um, and the new analytics, I think, have really uh, given us a lot, of, um, a lot more power to, uh, to differentiate disease. 
uh, versus normals. And um, certainly this newly approved uh, laser spectral contrast imager is also very exciting. Um, um, you know, we'll be continuing to study this, and um, I think this is very exciting in terms of, you know, looking to the future, are we going to be um, really trying to examine blood flow as a biomarker for glaucoma? That's really the focus of my work uh, as a clinician scientist. And I actually think, you know, one of the things that's been on my mind lately is during these times, um, you know, these are where we're trying to adjust our practice due to coronavirus, um, you know, we are sort of trying to figure out how to get a, a better functional test um, perimetry. There's some concern about um, infection related to that. Um, and so, you know, can we do sort of a, a quick functional test that may add to our armamentarium of glaucoma diagnostics? Um, and that may give us some greater degree of precision and sensitivity in diagnosing disease and ultimately uh, treatment uh, as we develop new treatments.